Hi there, this is Matt with OT3D.org. This video is part of a series of videos that I'm making designed to teach occupational therapy practitioners, educators, and students about applications for 3D printing and practice. My goal is to provide videos, resources, and instructional templates that walk you through the process of using a 3D printer. In this video, we're going to take a look at resin printers. We'll cover what they are, how they work, and how to set up a 3D print using one. So if you've been watching my videos, chances are you've learned a little bit about how 3D printers work, especially FDM printers, or those printers that were using those round spools of plastic filament. But today we're going to mix it up a little bit and talk about resin printers. Resin printers function a little differently than their FDM cousins. So just for starters, instead of the filament or plastic string like PLA or ABS, that are used in FDM printers, we will be using a liquid called resin. Now be aware that most resins will have some kind of smell, uh, fumes, that you don't necessarily want to be breathing in, so most resin printers are designed with this little enclosure. You can see the red and yellow enclosures that keep those smells in on the printers here at my local makerspace. Uh, the two resin printers that are available here at the makerspace are the Igloo Mars and the Any Anycubic Mono X. There are a variety of resin printers available, but I would happily recommend both of these. I've had good experiences with both of them. So now that we're getting started, one question that you might ask yourself is, why would I want to use a resin printer over some other form of additive manufacturing 3D printing? The two main reasons that I've come across are speed for printing small parts, and that resin printers, in a general sense, are capable of printing with higher quality than FDM printers, largely due to the way that they function. Now, resin printers use a build plate similar to 3D printers, but they don't have an extruder like filament printers because they're not using filament. So when you're running a print, the build plate, this piece right here, will lower itself into a vat of resin that has a clear plastic layer at the bottom. Now at the base of the printer, there is a very powerful set of lights. When the printer is running, it will lower the print head into the resin. There will be a bright flash of light that interacts with the very thin layer of resin that is between the build plate and that clear plastic surface. This light will cause a reaction called curing, where the resin will harden in the areas that were impacted by the light. This process is repeated layer by layer until the print is complete. So let's go a quick example of actually using a resin printer. As with filament printers, you'll be able to use those STL or OBJ files, like you can find on Thingiverse, Makers Making Change, all those kinds of websites. Now note that the build plate on resin printers is typically going to be smaller in size than their FDM counterparts, so keep that in mind if you're planning on doing projects that are very large or that require a lot of surface area. So for this particular print, I'll be using a program called Leechy, but there are others out there. Uh, one that comes to mind is Cheetubox. Now, just like with FDM printers, the first thing I want to do within the software is make sure that I have the printer that I will actually be using uh, be selected for the slicer. This makes sure that it has all the correct parameters, the size of the build plate, so on and so forth. Once the print has been loaded into the slicer, we can position it onto the build plate and then generate our supports. When doing a resin print, you should consider angling the print between 30 and 45 degrees off of the build plate for the best possible detail, making sure it'll stick. This is just based on personal experience. Now we can generate our supports. Fortunately, most programs like Leechy do this automatically with pretty good accuracy. After we have our supports generated, we can configure our settings. Now with resin, it is very important to use the settings that go with the specific kind of resin that you are going to be using. In my case, the settings are listed on the bottle of resin that I have, and I can fill in the require sections from there. On Leechy, there's also this cool option that allows you to see what other people have used for specific materials, so you can find those details there. The details are also available online with a quick Google search. Now once we have that all done, we can then slice our file and save it to a flash drive or other compatible storage device. Most of the resin printers that I've used use USB drives, but there might be some other ones out there too. One of the cool things about Leechy is that it'll actually show you the pattern of the flashing lights that it'll do layer per layer uh, once the print gets started, which I'll show you now because it's kind of cool. So now let's talk a little bit about setting the printer up because this will be a little bit different than FDM printers. With an FDM printer, 
usually you just need to make sure that you have enough filament that uh, it's set up correctly but with resin printers it's going to be a little bit different so if you're starting with an empty vat you can wipe down the screen the build plate and this bottom plastic sheet with an alcohol wipe to remove any dust or debris making sure that it dries completely before you uh, put it back down so you don't get any weird bubbles uh, be sure to shake up the resin most of them will instruct you to do this on the bottle but just be sure to do it because you don't want to have any irregularities and then carefully fill it up to the fill line most of the time this is denoted on the vat itself if you're doing a particularly large item keep in mind that you may need to top off the resin so that it has enough some of the fancier expensive resin printers will actually have a system that can keep this up to date a little bit easier but the ones that i'm using today i'm just gonna have to keep an eye on now an alternative if you're starting with resin that's uh, already in that vat down there you have two options you can either choose to pour it back into the bottle to shake it up or you can use a non-abrasive tool like uh, a gloved finger uh, to kind of mix up the resin a little bit clean off the build plate i've personally found better results starting from a clean slate but if you're running print after print after print you may not need to do that or it may be too time intensive so but your results will likely vary based on the printer resin how long the resin is sat in between prints just Experiment a little bit and find out what works best for you and your prints. In addition to the resin, the small plastic sheet and the LCD screen should be considered consumables as they wear out over time and will need to be replaced. The plastic screen more frequently than the LCD. Now, we'll wait a little while and once the print is complete, you can pull it off the build plate. Uh, I happen to use water washable resin, so I'm just going to rinse it off in this tub of water underneath the sink. With many resins, you're going to need to use an alcohol bath, so isopropyl alcohol, uh, which has the added benefit of evaporating once you take it out with this water washable resin. Once I'm washing it off, I'll need to either wait a while or air dry it just to make sure there's no uh, liquid remaining on it because the next step that we're going to do is we're going to cure it. Now, we've already partially cured the inside layers of the print, but we have not done the outside layers that were not exposed to the UV light. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in a curing station here. I'm going to set the timer to four minutes and then it's going to spin around like a microwave shining UV light on it just to let it cure. You may need to position it or rotate it midway through just to make sure that the entire part is exposed to this light so it hardens in accordance with everything else so it's uniform. Now after the part is done curing you can sand it down and perform any finishing touches that may be needed. You can treat it pretty much like an FDM print as far as sanding goes, but honestly, I haven't really needed to sand most of my resin prints just because the definition is that much better. So that just about wraps up everything that you need to know about how to use a resin printer. Now, to talk generally about resin printers briefly, uh, there's a couple things that I feel like I should mention. They are excellent tools depending on the use that you're using them for. Um, if you really need those fine details, or if you're printing a ton of small parts, the way that resin printers work, you can fill up that build plate, and it'll take the same amount of time as if you only had one small section of the build plate covered, because it's just that flashing light layer by layer. The only thing that's going to take additional time is additional height, because it'll have more layers. Now, while they do have higher detail, resin printers are not a fix-all for all solutions. There are certain situations where having all of the different kinds of materials that are available in FDM printers is beneficial. If I want to print something flexible, if I want to print something that's going to be super UV resistant, I can do that on an FDM printer, where on a resin printer I'm going to be dealing with parts that are very detailed, but also may lack some of the sturdiness that may be needed for some pieces of assistive technology, prosthetics, uh, so on and so forth. Now, if you're just getting started with resin printing, or if your facility doesn't have access to a resin printer, I would highly recommend reaching out to a local makerspace or finding someone that does have a resin printer so you can try it out, uh, test the designs that you're going to be making to see if a resin printer makes sense for you. There's a lot of things that an FDM printer can do, and there's a lot of things that a resin printer can do. What it's going to take is a little bit of experimentation to find out what will work best for you. So thank you for listening to this video on resin printing. This is Matt with OT3D.org. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments of this YouTube video. 
If you need more resources or the visual guide that goes along with this video, check it out on ot3d.org. I'll have it linked below. And happy printing!